Well, hey guys, how you doing? Um, so there's a lot going on, <laughs> just like the Lord said it would happen. Um, so, you know, every single thing that is happening right now is literally ordained by God. Um, it's hard for people to understand unless you're not walking in the spirit. You really have to walk in the spirit. The Lord has been giving me so many revelations and uh, I'll be honest, you know, when I first heard about this, I was like, what? Are you sure? And so I tested the spirits. Um, you know, Jesus Christ come in the flesh. He bled on the cross. He rose on the third day. He was born of a virgin. Um, he was God in the flesh. You know, I, I tested all those spirits and um, got scripture and everything and kind of mind blown. Um, so many revelations. But Jesus, um, you know, he created the world with Adam and Eve. Um, and, you know, and I spoke earlier about, um, you know, don't just rely on his book. Of course, you want to read his word. What I meant was don't rely on your own understanding when you're reading his scripture, that you need to ask him for discernment and you need to ask him what his revelations mean. Because I got a revelation last night and or maybe it was today. I don't know. He's poured his spirit out so much lately. Um, but the revelation was that. Peter was the only one who got out of the boat, okay? Because the Lord spoke to me and said this. Peter was the only one to get out of the boat, right? He had faith, but then his faith dwindled. So he was trusting in Jesus, and then he got scared and relied on man and fear, and then he sunk, he fell, and no one else got out of the boat. So they were the martyrs, you know, other than John, who's walking in the spirit. So Jesus was showing that correlation. When you're walking in his spirit, you are his bride. You are saved by faith and his grace alone. Jesus already abolished the sins at the cross. Now for people saying things and throwing their daggers at me right now, the Lord said it would happen. He actually gave me this message. The Pharisees are going to come after you. It's so soon. This was this was yesterday, by the way. They will not understand any of this. They are wicked and deceitful, and they do not know what it's like to fall in love. They do not know what love is. But I am your king. I am your creator. I am your God, your sovereign God, your Messiah, your Jehovah, and I have ordained this. Come to my feet, children, and I will guide you. Do not listen to their words, for it's blasphemy, despicable and deceitful. I won't let you get down now. Those words won't hurt you because you're under my protection and my seal. Um, and then he said, uh, this is not a coincidence. They speak lies in my name. Remember, I know the beginning from the end. I already know what people are going to do and what choices they are going to make. Their choice was theirs and they failed. They will have to repent. The sky is falling. It's coming, children. Keep watching. And don't let the Pharisees bring you down. I'm your Jehovah, and I have spoken. Seven. Seven is the key. They came after you like I said they would. Now the wise are completely together as one. And they trample on the wicked. So he put five of us left, as the, symbolizing as the five virgins. They are going to bow at your feet. The time is coming where they will realize they were wrong and their religion took over my spirit. It's finished, children. It's done. I'm your Yeshua and I have spoken. And then these are the scriptures he gave me. Now, the crazy thing about these scriptures is the first time he gave it and then he said, okay, I'm done. And then, and then he was joking. Jesus, he jokes. He's awesome. Then he gave another set of scriptures. So the first set of scriptures was 22. And this was last night, by the way. The second scripture was 8, 822. And then the next one was 17, which is victory. Or I think 9 was next. 9, which is um, the fruit of the spirit and judgment and also um, uh, new beginnings, I believe. And 17 is victory, according to the Bible concordances. Okay, so he gave me those. So he gave me Joshua 4.11, Malachi 1.9, 1 
Job 7.11, John 4.6, Job 2.5, 1 Corinthians 3.7, Philippians 2.5-9, Colossians 1.3-11, Ephesians 3.5, Genesis 14.11, Deuteronomy 1.6, Jude 1.3, Zephaniah 1.2, Obadiah 1.3-8. through 8. Seven is the key. He says it again. Leviticus 2.8, James 3.10, Colossians 1.9, Luke 14. 3 through 7, Mark 1 11, Nehemiah 2 8, 1 Timothy 2 6, then he gave me another set of scriptures, James 1 3, Malachi 1 7, Hebrews 2 9, Revelation 11 3, Obadiah 1 6, Ephesians 3 7 through 12, 2 Thessalonians 2 10, Joshua 4 11 again, Mark 1 2, James 3 8, Luke 16 2, Matthew 27 8, Revelation 3 5, John 14 7, and John 15 6. Jude 1 8, 1 John 4 8, 1 Timothy 2 9, Colossians 3 17, Ephesians 3 10, Philippians 1 9, Mark 7 6, Joshua 5 2, Numbers 12 2 through 8, Numbers 3 5, Romans 4 7, Galatians 12 6, Matthew 12 8, Hebrews 4 7, Philippians 1 12, Luke 21 6, Ezekiel 18 2, Isaiah 27 3, Genesis 15 4, 2 Timothy 2 11. Okay, now those are the scriptures for the message. Now, I'll be honest, this is all for Jesus' glory because he's drawing the line right now. He told me in a message today that he's drawing the line. There's going to be one side, which are the Pharisees who are not walking in the Spirit, who do not know his voice. And then you have the other side who are walking in the Spirit and they're not relying on man's understanding. They're actually going to Jesus Christ personally, asking him and praying with their hearts for scripture and for discernment and not relying on what scripture is because there's been so many mysteries revealed thus far since December 30th, he's been giving me prophecies and so much already has come true and we are at the end. The next prophecy is the people left behind. So that is January 3rd's message. January 4th is what he gave me. He said, this is the last warning and the trumpet will sound. Now people are talking about my marriage and how I walked away. Well, let me just tell you, you know, I'm not going to personally talk about how I was in my marriage. I was more, I was walking in the spirit. I see Jesus. I saw Jesus every day. Um, you know, I worship him. I asked him if there was anything deceptive to take it away. Every day I ask him that. And our loving God, if there was, I know he would have taken it away. So I do not doubt that any of this was not Jesus. And it's, people are not going to understand until they ask Jesus and they walk in the spirit. But God ordains people to be together sometimes to save that person, to help them walk in the spirit and not rely on man's laws. But God also wants everyone to have an Adam and an Eve who started the world. And, you know, God revealed things to me and I prayed about it and, you know, they were part of his will and I did every single thing that he asked me to do. But it was more than that. I felt it in my spirit. There's things that you cannot understand, but when you know it's by the Holy Spirit, you feel it with your soul. You know what God's voice sounds like. I mean, it's the same voice that told me to give someone 250 bucks or something, you know, to help them out. It's the same voice uh, with tons of scripture. And what he's trying to do is trying to show you the line where you have to ask him and not rely on your own condemnation. You should not be condemning anyone. It's like the one in the sand, you know, he said, who's never stone, who's never sinned, throw the first stone. That's what people are doing right now. But I'm okay with that because Jesus told me I was going to be his fall girl. He chose me as a prophet. He told me I was going to fall. And after I fall, after because he ordained all of this and he had all of this play into action. And it's all because of Adam and Eve, the start of the creation, um, you know, how you're going to be with your soulmate forever in heaven, all of that. Um, and he told me that, us five, basically, we're going to fall. You know, people are going to come against us because they came against him. And that is literally happening now. He prophesied all of this before it even happened. So now I'm waiting until the fall is over because that's when he comes. He told me once it's fallen, the wage reaches the highest peak. He just referred that as being the highest wage. Remember when he gave me that prophecy? 
I wasn't sure it was like sin and death, but it's literally the falling away right now. People are falling away and they once thought, you know, it was Jesus. And now they're, they're saying that Jesus, there's no way he's speaking this because he wouldn't do that. So you take everything to Jesus and you cannot always believe everything you hear unless you ask Jesus because there are reasons, there are reasons things happen and I'm never going to say I'm perfect. I'm not 100% perfect, but I know when something is ordained by God and I feel it in my spirit because I, like I said, I, I worship Jesus Christ. I love him and I will be the fall girl any day. Um, and God doesn't have any favorites. You know, he pours his favor out on some people and he chooses people for different things for what they can handle. You know, I don't know why he chose me to be a part of this ending. People say I do it for attention. Guys, why would I put this stuff out there just to be condemned and, and you know, alone and have my family and friends come against me who aren't walking in the spirit, who do not understand you know, ask yourself, what would it all be for? I don't monetize. YouTube collects my money because um, the Lord told me not to. That's the thing. When this all started, Jesus said, do not monetize because you don't collect from my words when you're doing prophecy. Um, he said, lay down your idols in the world, meaning you can't love the world and me. So he cleaned out my closet. You know, people laugh at that, but I'm literally cleaning out my closet. And he goes, yes, no. No, no, yes. <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's what the thoughts of the Holy Spirit. And um, the Lord has anointed me, but he's given me this amazing gift where I'm connected to Jesus like 24-7. You can ask me a question and I can ask him. And then I get a thought from the Holy Spirit. And I don't know why. I, I'm not special. You know, I, I don't know why he gave me this gift, but it's an amazing gift. And... You know, I'm going to accept it. And as for Daniel and I, I have no qualms against Daniel or anything like that. You know, um, there's always two sides to everything. You know, no one, you can't always just assume something. That's all I'm going to say. But um, like I said, we ended on fine terms. You know, um, I left. I felt, I mean, I told you the Lord even picked out my apartment. And, and the apartment number, and it's all, it's hard to explain unless you're walking in the spirit. And, um, you know, so the Lord showed me in Genesis um, 16, when you speak something to existence, when a husband says, I want a divorce or separation, God hears that. That's an ending for God. You know, it's just like... Um, Sarai got mad at Abraham because he went through it with what she spoke out loud. And God said, well, you spoke it, so it's done. So God doesn't need contracts. So for all the people, you know, saying things, um, he doesn't need contracts. And when you are um, ordained by something in the spirit and in the flesh, and don't forget, you know, if you're walking in the spirit, I told you June 17th. That was a big day. That was when our spirit was caught up. I had that dream to heaven um, the next day. It was either a dream or an out-of-body vision. I don't know. I've only had one of those when my dad died. Um, so I'm not sure what that was because I don't remember falling asleep because it was 8 a.m. But that was, that was, you know, things are happening in heaven in the spirit until it catches up with the flesh. And that's literally about to happen with his glorious bodies. And it's all part of the wineskins. And these, some of these are just mysteries revealed in Daniel 12. And if you don't ask Jesus Christ, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Because it's not something we've been taught. Man has been teaching things over and over again, pushing that law. That's why that verse talks about there's a yeast spreading in the churches teaching the wrong information because God took our sins away on the cross and um, you know God looks at something if you are um, ordained you're married in the spirit and in the flesh when God ordains something and he calls you 
to marry, whether or not you have a contract or not, you're married in the spirit and the flesh. And you guys may think that's crazy. It's just revelations that I've been getting. And um, I believe it to be 1000% true. Because here's the thing, um, I wouldn't be getting persecuted so hard if it wasn't Jesus. And this is what Jesus is going to do. I'm warning you right now. <laughs> he's drawing the line, guys. And he gave me a prophecy on this, but he's drawing the line. And the ones not walking in the Spirit are not truly relying on Jesus Christ to save them. Those are the ones that are going to have to stay behind and repent for the 12 hours of destruction. And people ask me where I get the 12 hours of destruction. Well, it's Revelation 3.10 when he says, I'll keep you from the hour of trial that is coming upon this entire world. Well, that hour, Israel is, you know, from sundown to sunset is 12 hours. And then on the Maseroth, um, the one minute to repent, he gave me a prophecy, it was 24, but then he said, it's half time, so it's 12. So he gave me a prophecy that there's that 12 hours after his elect get caught up by the angels. Um, then they have that 12 hours of destruction, and that's going to be a hard, hard time. So that is when you get on your knees. I mean, you should get on your knees now. But if you are stubborn um, and you, <laughs> you're believing in your own understanding and not walking in the Spirit... Um, then you need to get on your knees and pray without ceasing because that's when darkness is going to fall and that's when you have to stay in and pray without ceasing and Jesus will pick you up in the whirlwind like he did with Elijah and again I know a lot of people won't understand this because you haven't gone to Jesus directly if you truly had that relationship with Christ and you truly have it in your heart you can ask Jesus all of this he's revealing so much to his people right now and he wants everyone to be with their soulmate adam and eve he's making everyone an adam and eve because god's greatest creation is love and the thing is is when one person's walking in the spirit and you're with someone and the other one is not there's an unmixed situation there and that's really hard you know so when you're spiritually connected to somebody, it's the most beautiful thing in the world because it's ordained by God. It's not just in the flesh, it is in the spirit. So you feel everything with the Holy Spirit. Your thoughts become the same. Um, you know, so people ask me, you know, why stir up anything? Well, I'm not stirring up anything. I'm literally being obedient to Jesus. You know, he asked me to do things and it's all for his glory because he's going to draw the line and people are going to see. And so if those people on that wrong side of the line see that the people on the right side of the line went up, they're going to know God's true love and how Jesus really is love. He is so much love and he's, he's not condemnation like people think he is when you truly trust in him and you believe in him with all of your heart he's not going to condemn you okay he didn't condemn people in the bible you know he helped them and he led them and we're all human we're all going to fall short and no one's perfect but I seek Jesus in every single thing that I do and if I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I will repent and I go to Jesus and I say, Jesus, you know, if I'm, I ask him every day, if I'm doing something wrong, that I'm hearing you wrong, or this is not correct, I need you to fix it and stuff. You know what he does? He loves me and he gives me more prophecy and he gives me more messages to build the body of Christ. And that's all I'm trying to do is encourage the body of Christ. And he told me there would be fiery arrows coming at me. And it's going to feel like stabbing in my heart. And people don't know me personally. They don't know what kind of person I am. Um, you know, so it's quick. It's easy. It's easy to condemn. It's easy to judge. You know, but you don't know anything about me. You know, and the ones that do and they're not walking in the spirit, they don't understand. So it's one of those things that's just going to be revealed after he comes and then you're going to know that um, 
Jesus is not who you think he is. He is a beautiful, wonderful Messiah, an amazing God who loves his children, who gives his children chance after chance after chance because that is how much he loves his kids. And he's given me countless messages, guys. There's a whole stack like this high of messages since December 30th. And so many of those prophecies have come true. And the other ones that are about to come true are the big ones. Those are the destruction and that's after the rapture. When I tell you the rapture is coming, it is coming. He said, after the fall, which is the falling away, this is literally the falling away. There's people who said that I was hearing from God and they're gonna say, I'm not hearing from God anymore. Think about that. If God is ordaining something and he's making you a prophet and he's trying to save his people, God, the enemy can't do anything unless God allows it. Now would a loving God allow someone who prays and worships him and reads his word every day and follows his every footstep and laid down so many things for him and would he would he let allow that to happen no i don't believe he would and um i haven't done anything to hurt anyone or try to hurt anybody i literally did anything that Jesus has asked me to do because I love Jesus Christ so much and I would walk on water for him. I would walk through fire for him. And if you ask me to do it again, I would do it all over again. Because when the world hates you, consider yourself blessed because they hated him too. And they condemned him, you know, and, and people, they don't understand, but you know what? The ones that have walked in the spirit are walking in the spirit and they've asked Jesus. Jesus gives them dreams. He's given them dreams of me before. I've had people come and apologize to me because Jesus told them in a dream that I was a true prophet. You know, people don't understand things like the dates and everything. I spoke everything the Lord gave me. All those dates meant something. Now, you know, I'm not perfect and I can't discern everything that Jesus means because he is so complex. You know, people say um, God doesn't ever use confusion in the Bible. There's many countless scriptures where God does use confusion in the Bible, you know, but people don't, they don't see that. But if they ask Jesus, they would get that revelation. It would be revealed to them. He's revealing so much. There's different groups all the time in in the Bible. So no matter what, um, anyone can, they're gonna make videos. They're gonna come out to me pretty hard. I already know it's coming. It's already happening, but I'm excited for it because after it's done, Jesus comes. So if you don't know Jesus, you ask him to come into your life, you believe in him with all your heart. You lay down things for him. You walk in his spirit and you walk in childlike faith. God, you know, has revealed that he has so many blessings for us in heaven. I didn't even know those things. I just followed Jesus and and poured and he poured his spirit out on me because I prayed every day and asked for his will. I told him I'd give up my music. I told him I would give up whatever he wanted me to give up if he would just give me his will. And right now, he created me for this purpose. I don't know. But you can just call me the fall girl because that's basically what it is. But you know what? I have so much peace. So much peace. When I walked outside today, when I got saved, I felt the wind blow like a peace that I've never felt before. I felt that same peace today. And God always does the beginning and the end. And if you look at the rapture dream I had, it was the beginning. I was getting engaged and um, I knew what day it was because I was at the Greer Fest singing and I sang and got engaged on August 24th. And, um, now I'm in my new apartment. I'm separated, so, so that's the ending. 
and people don't understand it, but if you take it to Jesus, he's going to reveal things that you never known before. Our God is good, and when we get to heaven, it's going to be mind-blowing what you're going to figure out because the revelations he's giving me, wow. It I just can't even I can't even explain it, but he pours the spirit out on me every single day. The Lord gives me a message every day. Now, a lot of them are personal messages to me and encouragement. And, you know, when he tells me to do a video to encourage people, I do. And I'm just very obedient to Jesus. You know, I listen to him. Um, the other day, my brother, you know, Jesus, uh, um, he was, he needed some money or whatever. I didn't know he needed money, but Jesus, before I answered the phone, Jesus said he's going to ask you for some money. <laughs> I was like, what? So I started talking to him about Jesus. It was a chance for me to witness to him. And then at the very end of the conversation, he asked if he could borrow some money. <laughs> I laughed and I said, well, let me ask Jesus. And Jesus gave him half of what he asked for. And then, you know, he's like, well, I really need this. And, the, you know, so I was like, all right, well, I have to listen to Jesus. Let me let me just pray again and ask him. And, you know, um, he kept kind of begging or whatever. And then Jesus said, just give it to him. So I did. And, you know, I love my brother. You know, he's awesome. Uh, he's a really good, good person. Um, but anyway, so I help out when I can. Um, but I just thought that was an example. You know, when you're walking in the spirit, you hear things from Jesus. He guides your life. He directs your life. And... You're going to understand if you're not with your soulmate now, sometimes the Lord blesses you and puts you together with your soulmate on earth. Sometimes he puts you together with people that you're just trying to save. Sometimes you're with someone that you saved and then he gives you your soulmate. But see, you know, the whole man's law talked about it being adultery when if you're still married and you go out with somebody else or you divorce that's man's law. You got to ask Jesus. You got to walk in the spirit and not under the law because Jesus came to fulfill the law. Anyway, I love you guys so much. And um, for all my Holy Spirit believers out there, I will see you in the clouds. Ignore the people on YouTube um, trying to scam you and impersonate you. I will never ask you for money. I don't monetize and I'll never ask you for money. But um, anyway, I love you guys with all my heart. And God bless.